This video brought to you by Bose, makers of the award-winning Bose 10 noise-canceling headset, and by Cessna, the world's largest manufacturer of general aviation aircraft. Uh, good morning. We're here at the first day of AOPA Expo 2007. We're with Chris uh, Bachelor of Cessna, who's an engineer on the new Teeler turbo diesel project for the Skyhawk. This is a new installation, which we haven't seen before. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Chris? Sure. The uh, turbo diesel really offers uh, several uh, benefits to the Cessna customer. It allows them to burn Jet A fuel in their 172, which is a big uh, advantage internationally. Uh, but it also uh, has several other advantages in increased range and performance performance and uh, also be, we go from a uh, Lycoming engine, uh, you know, which is old technology, we're really bringing into the, to the new millennium here. We have a FADEC controlled engine, the single lever power control, we're going from a fixed pitch propeller to a constant speed propeller and there are lots of advantages for range and endurance. Uh, tell customer. us about, this is a Centurion 2.0 which is mm -hmm. an improvement next generation from the 1.7 which was 135 horsepower. This is 150 I believe you said? That's a 155 horsepower. So the Teelert has uh, increased the horsepower. Uh, they have two liter engines which are 135 horsepower. This is a 155 horsepower two liter. And how did they increase the power? There are, 1.7. Uh, well, essentially, there's a software change uh, to the FADEC, which allows them to run a little bit more fuel flow, and also the cooling capacity was increased to go uh, from 135 to 155 horsepower. What kind of initial performance figures are you expecting to see from this engine in the Skyhawk? Well, we're very pleased with the initial performance uh, which we've received on the Skyhawk. We haven't completed all of our initial, or all of our final uh, performance evaluations, but uh, inc we have increased range, increased endurance, and also 27% less fuel flow over the Lycoming uh, engine. So let's put some specific numbers on that. Uh, in a Lycoming, uh, typical fuel flow is in the 9 to 10 gallon range? That's correct. So we should see 6 to 7 in this? Right. In this airplane, you'll see about 7 to 7.5 seven gallons per hour of fuel flow. And uh, how about uh, climb, initial climb performance figures and cruise performance figures? Well, in, in the uh, performance figures, the climb and cruise are very comparable. We have on the uh, S model 172, 180 horsepower. This is, of course, 155. But because we have the constant speed propeller, it's it's uh, given us some advantages there. So the, uh, the cruise is very comparable, and the climb is very comparable even though we're running a much lower horsepower engine. Now what kind of a TBO do you, or TBR I guess is what uh, right. Taylor calls it. What, what's the initial number on this? This engine is a 2400 hour TBR engine and you go from running an on condition engine to running a uh, basically more of a jet type mentality on maintenance. Uh, you're going to have uh, scheduled inspections, 600 hour scheduled inspections which are going to replace known wear components and so we believe that will give the customer less downtime and allow them to really run the airplane uh, with a greater utilization rate. Uh, does that, uh, those uh, uh, periodic inspections still include the gearbox? Yes, the gearbox is inspected at, at the periodic intervals. Also, with Lycoming, we recommend 50 hour oil changes. This engine has 100 hours between oil changes, so it allows the customer to run the airplane longer and, uh, and really make, you know, have, have better use of the airplane between inspections. How far along is the testing program? Uh, the testing program is very far along. We are uh, in the final stages of uh, getting the airplane ready for production. We've done a lot of work on the production side to make the uh, Lycoming and the diesel, the diesel engine uh, very similar. So when they go down the production line, it's a very modular assembly. And uh, we feel that we've done a very good job of uh, getting the engineering uh, done. The, there are several significant differences between a retrofit 172, 135 horsepower and the, uh, the factory installation. The, one of the biggest benefits is the G1000 integration. We have all of our cast messaging and all of the engine parameters are integrated with the G1000. We also have added a FADEX standby battery, which allows the uh, the airplane to run for two hours. In the event of a total electrical failure, there's a battery dedicated just to the engine. Um, and we've also added what we call a JETA-only fuel port.
remote, which will not allow the customer, uh, the line person, to fill the airplane up with 100 low lead. It has a specific shape and it has flapper doors that only allows a Jet A fuel nozzle to be inserted into the tanks. And uh, when will this certification project be complete and, and the engine be available as an option for the Skyhawk? Well, we're expecting first deliveries uh, mid-2008. Okay, and will the primary uh, market for this, do you think, be flight schools or will it be individual owner or both? I, I think that this has a broad uh, appeal to both the, uh, the individual owner uh, that flies uh, a fair amount and also to fleet operators and, of course, the big appeal is international. Mm -hmm. How about U.S. sales? Have you uh, seen a lot of interest from the U.S. for this. We've had a, diesel. we've had good feedback from our U.S. Uh, sales uh, representatives, and they think that there is a good market for this here. We will still be selling Lycomings and diesels. There are still some advantages to having a Lycoming powered airplane, and uh, we think that you know we're still going to sell uh, you know both models and, and do very well with both models. Do you think this will be priced comparably uh, uh, to a, uh, a Lycoming version, or do you know yet? There there is a uh, there is a uh, price advantage to the Lycoming, but uh, for the turbo diesel, uh, it is it is not uh, you know it is not Millennium's more expensive. It is it is reasonably priced.